Will you all pray with me? O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Very shortly after I went to Nebraska, living in a teeny, teeny, tiny town, 1,500 people, in the first few months I was there, my daughter Charlotte was with me. And one night we decided we were going to drive to Grand Island. That was about 55 miles away across open prairie. There is nothing between this little town and Grand Island. We were going to go to the movies. We hadn't been there very long at all. So the roads were pretty strange and the way was strange. I was still finding my way around Nebraska. And we got out of the movie theater pretty late, probably like 11 o'clock at night. It was dark. We started our way home. And the first part of the trip was on an interstate, Interstate 80. But then you have to get off the interstate and drive on some much smaller roads to get back to Sutton, Nebraska. Well, I took the wrong exit off the interstate because I wasn't familiar with this yet. And out in that part of the world, when you get off the interstate, you don't necessarily go onto another highway. You rapidly discover that off the exit ramp, you are on a gravel road in the middle of a cornfield. So we got lost. Now I figured, all right, the roads here are pretty much square, you know, right angles to each other. They go pretty straight. If I just kind of keep going south and east and south and east, I ought to come back to Sutton or at least to a road where maybe I know where I am. But we drove and we drove and we drove on gravel roads. And then I discovered another thing that happens in the middle of a gravel road in the middle of the night on a very, very dark night. There were black Angus cows in the middle of the road. I almost had a terrible accident. I mean, just, just screeched to a halt just in time before there's this, you know, two-ton cow in front of me in the road, several of them. But anyway, we eventually had this adventure and eventually found our way to a road where I thought I knew where I was. And then off there in the distance, I saw some lights. And I said, I think that's such, oh, such rejoicing. We had found our way. Found our way. And then this week, I got to thinking about all the other stories about being lost that I might tell you. Stories about my own life and being lost, feeling really personally lost sometimes, and how God has found me. Then I thought about all the stories of all the people I've known in my congregations, or the people I knew when I was working as a psychotherapist. Lots and lots of stories of the lost and the found, inspiring stories. And then I got to thinking about the anniversary that is today. Notice the date on the calendar. And then I thought about the thousands of people that are remembering great lostness today. The people that are especially remembering the horrific events of 21 years ago, remembering the loved ones who were lost to the attack of terrorists. And I'm sure remembering their own lostness that followed for months and even years of grief, lives lost and lives changed in a blink. And then I went on to think about the years of war in Iraq and Afghanistan. And not only of our soldiers lost there, but of the dead in Iraq and Afghanistan. 
the thousands who died in those wars. And I got to thinking more recently about all the lives being lost in the Ukraine. Lives lost, lives changed, never to be the same. Pain, sorrow, grief, questions. And then I thought about the people of the United Kingdom who I think are feeling a bit lost. The world has changed for them. The kind of stability that they have known for so long is gone. And I'm sure that the royal family is feeling lost. The boat is rocking, the waves rise. No crown or title lessens their human grief. Lost. A lot of lostness in our world today. These days, it often feels like the entire world is shaking. It feels as if all humanity has lost its way. Michael Smirkanish on CNN yesterday morning, his poll question of the day was which was more likely to fail in the next few years, the monarchy or American democracy? 71% of the people responding to the poll said American democracy was more likely to fail. More and more we hear this in the media. More and more we hear about our divisions, all the ways we can't get along. We go on day after day living our lives, but many of us see the dark cloud on the horizon. We see the ominous signs. So much lostness in our world, everywhere. It seems like it has just sped up over the last 20 years. One thing after another, making us as a people feel lost. We search for answers and solutions. Sometimes we wonder where it all went wrong. We are both searching for something we feel we have lost in this world. And we are also the ones who are lost in this world. The world has probably always been a bit shaky. And it has always had lots of people who grumbled and complained and accused others of being the source of all the troubles. There have always been those who didn't get it and whose actions often just made things worse. That's where we meet Jesus today. He's been at another dinner with the Pharisees. And again, they grumble and complain about the fact that Jesus eats with tax collectors and sinners. So he tells them, three parables or stories. One about the shepherd looking for a lost sheep and another about a woman searching for a lost coin. In both stories, what is lost is only a small amount, one sheep out of a hundred and one coin out of 10. The search is deep and wide and intense and doesn't stop until the lost is found. And then there's great rejoicing. Jesus wants the poor and the lowly, the least of these, the sinners and losers to know that they are important to God. And God is always seeking them. I wonder whether the Pharisees ever realized that they were lost too, lost in all their laws and rules. 
and that God was looking for them too. God's looking for each one of us and for all of us together. Sometimes it may feel as if God has abandoned us when times are very difficult. Even Jesus felt forsaken as he hung on the cross. But God never stops looking for us and never abandons us. Job was always trying to find a reason for his suffering. His friends tried to give him answers, none of which were satisfactory. Job thought he understood God, and he demanded an accounting from God for all the disasters he had suffered. In the end, his answer came when he stood in awe before the God who had stood with him in the midst of his suffering. Job had misunderstood the role of God in his life and in the world. As we search for answers to our troubles and to the problems of our world, I think we are in essence trying desperately, like Job, to understand God. In searching for this answer, we end up feeling more and more lost, more and more separate. I believe that what we have often lost is the essential mystery of God. And the more we try to grasp at an understanding of God, the more we are lost, the more we feel lost. I believe the essential mystery of God is what has been lost and that it is what we are searching for so frantically in our world today. The problem is we don't realize what it is we're even seeking. We've grown up in an age where science has taught us to find definitive and verifiable answers to our questions. We know the speed of light, we know that E equals MC squared. We know how to build skyscrapers. We can sequence DNA. We can put men on the moon. We can send a telescope to take pictures of the Big Bang and the beginning of the universe. And so we search for a definitive and verifiable answer to why any tragedy has struck, to why our world feels like it's falling apart. But the yearning of our souls is not really an answer to the question of why, as much as it is an assurance that we have not been abandoned by God. God remains a mystery. Try as we might, there are no human explanations for who God is. And the real irony is that while we are looking for God, as if God is the one who was missing, God has been searching for us because we are the ones who are really lost. Jesus came to seek the lost. His parables were meant to help us understand the mystery of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus. Jesus did not come to seek God since God was not lost. He came to seek us, for we are the lost. But I am absolutely convinced that God is always reaping when tragedy happens and when we mess up our lives when we mess up this world that we live in. I am also convinced that if we look for God in the midst of suffering, we will find hope. It's the same hope that was proclaimed on Easter Sunday after the tragic and untimely death of Jesus. It's the same hope that Paul proclaimed in his preaching. All heaven rejoices when God 
defines us. And no trauma, no disaster, no peril can separate us from God. God's frantic search for us has ended because we belong to God. For as Paul says, for I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels, nor demons, nor the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.